As some of you may have noticed on your journey to install Linux Mint on one of the newer computers with UEFI, you may have run into problems and obstacles. Many of you, such as myself, fought the battle and won the battle over the BIOS settings, but then we ended up with this message staring in our face. That missing file should be right here, but it's not on your ISO installation USB drive. Instead, we're going to add this extra file here, which will make everything work properly. The problems all start when you download the ISO image file, and then you try to burn the image with a USB image writer. And it takes a spe specific writer, and the reason is that most writers default to a DD format, which means you cannot edit the ISO USB, so you can't add the file that's missing. So instead, we're going to use Rufus. Rufus overcomes that problem and allows us to edit the file and add the file we need to later. You don't install Rufus. You just run it from the download directory by double-clicking on the Rufus EXE file, and you get the screen shown here. Once you've created the USB image stick, then you end up with this directory as shown here on the actual bootable ISO USB drive. Then you drill down to this folder on the thumb drive right here, this EFI boot subdirectories, and you find these three files. The file contents aren't the problem here, it's the file name. So we copy and paste the Grub X64 and we end up with this new Grub X64 copy. Now we simply edit the file name of the copy file into the file name shown here. And now we have the infamous mmx64.efi file on our ISO thumb drive. Now the thumb drive will boot properly in the newer UEFI computers. For those who didn't win the BIOS battle, you start here with integrated peripherals in, within your BIOS. This gives you this screen where you either, well you have to select AHCI if you want to install Linux or if you want to run a Linux volume. And you got to put it back on the RST if you want your original hard drive to work on that computer. Here you have to disable secure boot if you want to install or run Linux. If you want to go back and run Windows again, then you should enable this because it helps protect Windows. And last but not least, you probably want the boot menu enabled so that you can make choices during boot up time. This computer only has one hard disk drive. Therefore, the second boot device is that hard disk drive and it's labeled as Ubuntu because that was the last thing that was added. This was a dual boot, dual boot computer system. And that's why you need the boot menu. Notice when I reboot the system and tap the F12 key, on my case, it brings up the boot menu. And I have two choices, Ubuntu, which is Linux Mint, or Windows Boot Manager, which starts up Windows. So you get that choice once you use the boot menu. The problem with using a dual boot on a single drive is that a Windows update can damage the Grub bootloader, and therefore you lose your Linux, and that's not very much fun when that happens. So I prefer to use a second drive on the computer, install Linux on the second drive, then use the BIOS to select which one boots first, the Windows drive or the Linux drive. Just remember, if you go to switch between, you, between Linux and between Windows, you have to go in and edit those UEFI changes in the BIOS. Otherwise, neither one will work if the BIOS settings are wrong. So keep that in mind.